February 16th, 2021. Blackouts continue to strike across the country. Hey everybody, Hill Country Prepper. Appreciate you guys checking out my videos. Thanks to all my subscribers. I appreciate the comments, keep them coming. Just wanna say thanks for that. So here we are in virtually um, day two of this uh, major polar vortex event that's brought just bitter cold as far as uh, South Texas. Now this morning where I'm at, it was about 15 degrees. I think it might have warm, warmed up right now to possibly the mid 20s, uh, but we're expecting not to, um, not to get out of uh, not to get out of 32 degrees uh, by the end of the day. So it's going to remain freezing all day long. Uh, this will be the uh, I think the second consecutive day. Uh, and on top of that, we're also expecting some more uh, uh, freezing uh, precipitation this evening. So what we've got, uh, the county that I live in, there is approximately one third of the population. And I believe the population of this county is about two million people. So a third of the population is still without power. Uh, some of the people I know that I've, that I've spoke with have been without power for hours. And like I said, it's, it's, it might be in the mid twenties right now. So if they don't have a, a fireplace, a gas or a wood fireplace, they're not able to heat their home. A lot of people are having their water pipes burst uh, within their homes. Um, a lot of that going on as well. So there's a lot of talk right now going on about these power outages and um, a little bit of history on that. Uh, the grid that we have in this country, there's actually uh, three, three main power grids. Uh, you've got uh, what's known as the Eastern Interconnected Grid and then you've got the Western Interconnected Grid, and uh, then you got Texas. Uh, Texas, for the most part, it has its own grid. Now, the, um, you take out Texas, and the Eastern Interconnected uh, is basically everything else on the east side, east of the front range of the Rockies. And then, of course, the Western Interconnected uh, from the front range of the Rockies going to the west. Uh, here in the state of Texas, most of the state is on their own power grid, uh, except for uh, a section out around El Paso, which is on the western interconnected. Uh, a large part of uh, the Panhandle, uh, Lubbock north to Amarillo, is on the eastern interconnected. And then uh, a large part of uh, the eastern uh, Big Piney Woods of Texas uh, basically from Beaumont all the way north up uh, past Texarkana. Uh, those are on the eastern interconnected grid. A little history as to why Texas has its, its own power grid where other states don't. How that came about back in the early days after Edison had got the, got the power plants and everything up and running, you started to see little, little, little power generation plants popping up here and there. Uh, and it really got ramped up about World War I, uh, where the power plants started linking themselves together. Uh, and then again, even more so in World War II, uh, where they started uh, getting into a lot of hydroelectric power, so there were more and more links were being made. Now, in 35, 1935, the uh, Federal Powers Act was put in place. And what this did, this uh, gave uh, power to the Federal Power Commission uh, to regulate the sale of interstate electricity. Now, because Texas uh, didn't cross any state lines, they didn't get involved in that, so they weren't regulated. In fact, I don't think Power Grid in Texas, which, which by the way is known as the uh, Electricity Reliability Council of Texas, ERCOT, don't know how that reliability is working out right now, but uh, that's that's the name of it. Uh, they really didn't uh, didn't start getting into regulation into uh, until in the, in the 70s. Now, um, a lot of people think that the uh, Texas grid is completely isolated from the rest. It's 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 not completely. Uh, they can connect to the eastern interconnected in times of emergency, and they've done that a very few times in the past. Uh, they can also connect 
to the uh, power grid in Mexico when needed, and, and they, they've also done that as well. But with the situation we find ourselves in right now with these rolling power outages, and they're really not rolling, they're just power outages and people are without power. You know, we have massive heat waves here in the summertime, and there's people running their ACs 24-7 just cranking, you know, cranking out the AC, putting a lot of stress on the power grid. We don't have a lot of rolling blackouts or blackouts in the summertime. And uh, now here we are, and we knew this was coming. We knew uh, a week in advance that this polar vortex was on its way. Had plenty of time to prepare. I hope you did. I know I did. So why didn't the power company, why didn't ERCOT prepare for this? Apparently, right in the, uh, the heat, if you will, uh, of this polar vortex, when it, when it was really, really needed, some of the power generations plant, generation plants just mysteriously went down. Uh, so they're not generating power. So that's kind of mysterious, right? You know that there's a uh, polar vortex coming and it's going to be putting a stress on your power grid and just out of the blue, some of the uh, generation plants go down. A lot can be said about that. Is it just another way to control the population? I don't know. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Hey, if you guys find this video helpful, why don't you give me a thumbs up and a like. And if you're not a subscriber yet, why not? Subscribe now. And if you want to get notified whenever I upload new content, just click on that notification bell. Guys, I think it's going to be over here before too much longer. They're calling for this weekend. I think it's going to be back up in the mid-60s, which is where we typically are. But until then, we're just going to have to suffer through it. Uh, we're going to have a couple more days of cold weather, probably about another 48 hours. Going to have some more freezing rain tonight. Don't think it's going to snow, but it's going to be cold. The highways are going to be bad. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. Um, it'll be over before too much longer. If it's affecting you, I know some of you guys watching, this is affecting you. Be safe. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. It'll be over here in about 48 hours. But think about what I'm telling you about this. Uh, mysteriously, these power plants going, going offline. What's up with that? Leave me a comment. Just my thoughts, Hill Country Prepper. Thanks.